Work's not supposed to be easy. You ever finish working out? You're tired. You should be tired. But you need someone there to help breathe life into you when you're down. And there's one incredible way to do that, and that is to encourage. There's a story about a woman in Ohio. And I don't tell this story much, but I'm going to tell it. Um, Does anybody remember what happened on September 20th, 2016 in Charlotte? September 20th, 2016. Riots. An African-American named Keith Lamont Scott was killed by an African-American officer and sent off riots in our city. And as a middle-aged white guy, I didn't know what I was supposed to do, but I knew I hated it. I knew I hated it for my city that I grew up in. And so I decided to write this blog, and it was called What Charlotte Needs is Leadership. It takes courage to publish anything on the internet. It takes a lot of courage as a middle-aged white guy to publish what Charlotte needs as leadership in a racially driven discussion. But I had the courage, I prayed about it, I got all this energy behind me, I I finally did it, and the phone rang two minutes later. And there was a woman on the other end of the phone and she says, is this John Eats? Maybe. She said, I just read your article and I want to talk to you about it. Uh, That conversation went 45 minutes. It ended in about a 10 minute prayer. And her name is Connie Hawkins. Connie Hawkins has texted me, called me, emailed me, is relentless in encouraging me on a daily basis. Three years. If I opened my phone right now, you would be amazed at how many texts I got today. Everybody needs a Connie Hawkins in their life. The very first interview I ever did, this man said to me, John, everybody's going through something whether you know it or not. Everybody. And that means everybody in this room is going through something. And that means we need encouragement to help us through. Whatever it is. So what I'm asking you to do tonight is who can you encourage in your life? It will elevate them, I promise. They're going through something. The second part of leadership is, is probably my favorite, which is empowering. And empowerment is all about making decisions. And I tell this story a lot. Little Lucy's over there. I can see her. Uh, Amy was out of town one weekend. So what did dads do when Amy's out of town? They go to Chick-fil-A for like four or five hours. <laughs> and so I go to Chick-fil-A. Where I had this gift card that I just received. So I was so excited. We we're going to use this gift card. We drove across town. And we go in. And this place is a zoo. I mean, people are out the door. It was an absolute. We got in line. Kids are running everywhere. It was just an absolute mess. So we get up to the front of the line, and, and I order two meals and a thing, I give her the card, and right about that time, little Lucy goes running right through my legs. And the, the little 16, 17 year old girl behind the counter says, uh, sir, I have really bad news. This gift card's expired. And Lucy says, I want chocolate milk. And she looked at me and she said, sir, I really appreciate you coming to Chick-fil-A today. We're gonna accept this gift card. She didn't turn around and ask her manager. She had been empowered to make that decision. Just think about that. How often we micromanage and we make every decision when somebody else is ready to make it. And we've got to do that as leaders, our kids included. Now, if your kids aren't ready to make good decisions, you got to teach them, you got to coach them, you got to help them, you got to mold them, you got to pour into them. And so they can make good decisions. And that's part of your job as a leader. And the last thing we're going to cover tonight is, is where it really gets down to how do you serve? Because the third part of leadership, if you're going to elevate other people, is to serve them well. And uh, the word service comes from scripture, which means servant. It means to lay your life down for somebody else. Uh, a mentor of mine named Pat Lencioni, who's at the top of this book, has written some incredible work. He said, John, we shouldn't even call it servant leadership. We should just call it leadership now. And part of your responsibility is to serve other people. And whatever, whatever element that is for you in your life, whether it be a spouse or a kid or a coworker, if you inspire others, if you empower others, 
if you serve others, you will be on your way to elevating others and that is the key to successful leadership today. And I hope each of you will leave here tonight and try to do one thing that will do that. Just one. I'm not asking for a lot. One thing. Can I get a golf clap on that? <laughs> <laughs>